welcome to raw online so today we are going to see an important topic the epistaxis that is bleeding bleeding to the nose okay so what you need to be understood that is it may be a sign may not just be a diagnosis just if you can control the bleeding we can't be happy because we need to know why the patient has actually bled okay so now this epistaxis is an acute hemorrhage from within the nasal cavity including the nasopharynx approximately 60 percentage of individuals experience epistaxis at least once in their lifetime although only 6 percent that is only very minimal number 6 percent each cases require medical treatment of course in adults the peak incidence is 45 to 65 years of age and the most common cause in children or even in adults is going to be like pricking sensation or a foreign body inside the nose in extreme adults like more than 60 65 years the use of anticoagulations also forms a big role okay so coming to the basic anatomy the vascular supply of nasal cavity forms from terminal branches of two high pressure systems that is the internal and external carotid arteries okay so that is why this epistaxis becomes very important because these are two high pressure systems and they get anastomosed at one of the terminal areas that is your nasal cavity and from there if a bleed occurs it's going to be very significant and the majority of epistaxis nearly 95 percentage occurs on the anterior nasal septum at the region called as little area so this little area is supplied by kesselbach's plexus what is that kesselbach's plexus it's a network of vessels formed by three large thin walled arteries that is the spinopalatine artery anterior ethmoidal artery and the superior labial artery so now this you have a cross section there and uh, to divide to be a anterior and posterior you have this bony aperture part okay this is your bony aperture or the piriform aperture what we call as so if the bleed usually occurs at this side somewhere here that's most commonly a anterior bleed if it's occurring very deep into it it's called as a posterior bleed usually but there is no clear uh, delineation between an anterior and posterior bleed as far as the area is concerned so if you can see there is a anterior ethmoidal artery and there is a superior labial artery and there's a spinopalatine artery so this part is called as the kesselbach's plexus or the littles area so if you can see that the superior labial branch that is this this comes from the facial artery which is a branch of again at one of the branches of external carotid system okay so this is the superior labial branch from the facial artery joins to the anterior ethmoidal artery so this is a anterior ethmoidal artery this comes from ophthalmic artery this comes from ophthalmic artery so this ophthalmic artery so this ophthalmic artery is again a branch of internal carotid arterial system okay so this is from external carotid artery and this is from internal carotid arterial system okay along with the terminal branch of spinoplatine okay this comes from your internal maxillary artery internal maxillary artery again it's going to be one of the branches of external carotid arterial system only okay so this area is one area where the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery comes together and gets anastomosed okay so the superior labial branch of the facial artery joins with the anterior ethmoidal artery which is a branch of ophthalmic artery which is again a branch of internal carotid artery and the terminal branch of spinoplatine artery to form the kesselbach's plexus on the anterior nasal septum which is the source of 90 percentage of nasal bleeds and this can be easily visualized with your anterior rhinoscopy itself whereas the posterior bleeds are concerned the more likely is the spinoplatine artery which is of course the terminal division of internal maxillary artery which is again a branch of external carotid artery system so do remember little area kesselbach's plexus this is anterior bleed so here you'll be able to see your kesselbach's plexus that is a little area along with that the posterior epistaxis area that is called as a woodroffe's plexus okay so this woodroffe's plexus is formed by the spinoplatine artery along with some pharyngeal plexuses along with some pharyngeal plexuses and some venous system also it is 
not clearly sure whether it's completely an arterial segment or it's a venous segment, but it has some derivatives from both the venous system and the arterial system. And the major artery which is going to feed this Woodrow's plexus is your spinoplatin artery and the ascending pharyngeal branches arteries. So, this is the most common site of posterior bleeding.